and the talent has to be established or equipped in their life with the practice. If you are a good runner, that's a talent given by you, given by God to you. Everybody cannot be a runner. Even they practice, but some runners will be very fast. But yet they have to equip themselves with the practice. They have to do something so that they shall be blessed. And they shall have a special blessings of God. Of things are given to us to understand and we should be able to understand. Coming back to the word of God, Matthew chapter 25 is the subject that we are going to read tonight. Matthew chapter 25. In Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 to 30 is the special scriptures that we are going to have it. And these scriptures are so important to know that God is speaking. The Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is speaking through the parables in regards to the talents. And when you read this passage, you'll be able to understand the earthly man, the earthly businessman, the earthly owner is called the Lord. And Jesus is talking about the earthly man as the Lord, as the owner, as the businessman, as his owning so many servants under him. About him it is spoken. Just imagine Jesus himself is talking about this man saying that the Lord. So you should be able to understand. <clears throat> I'm led by the Spirit. I was, I was seeing something here when I was uh, explaining or preparing myself for the message and somebody was giving the testimonies. So at the end of the service, I will try to finish everything quickly and end of the service. You prepare yourself what God should you know, do in your life. And on, on Friday, we shall have the Holy Communion. So we shall be established very well. But tonight, you must hear something from the Lord who wants to tell you <clears throat> and guide you <clears throat> and help you. By the way, Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, the Bible clearly says, this came after so many <clears throat> other parables that Jesus spoke about. Jesus spoke about the wise woman and the foolish woman. See, the Bible speaks about wise men and Jesus spoke about the wise and the foolish woman. When Jesus was born, the kings went and represented themselves to Jesus. That we are here, but we know who you are and you have come into this world. A babe born out of Virgin Mary. But because they went to visit him, give him the blessings of God that God has given unto them as they were princes, kings, and rulers on the earth. They went and represent themselves and also present a different type of things to Jesus Christ our Lord. And the Bible says they were wise men. They choose whom to go and visit. They selected whom they shall be connected to. They understood what exactly they are supposed to do. They know from where the wealth and the riches and the blessing cometh. They went and poured out everything there. They know that they are going to receive it. Today, as you read this parable, the Bible clearly says that after the uh, wise and foolish virgins in Matthew chapter 25 verse 1, God has given us this uh, talent uh, uh, parable through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the Bible clearly says this parable is also connected to kingdom of heaven. Any parable that Jesus spoke on the earth, he always connected the parable of the earth to the heavenly kingdom. Who is going to rule? Who is going to live? Who is going to go? Who is going to stay? Who is going to come from heaven? Who is going to rule the earth? What is going to happen at the end of the day? Who, who, my, uh, so also how the wars are going to take place? When the Lord is going to come, what exactly is going to happen on this earth? Everything is connected to kingdom of heaven from the parable that is spoken on the earth. Your life on the earth is so important and I feel that many times I'm not able to understand or not able to do the way that I should and I should live so that I shall be able to fulfill the kingdom word in my life and our lives. Coming back to the important thing, the Bible clearly says, this parable also gives a wonderful lesson to every man and woman, those who want to really hear. Many times Jesus Christ on earth, when he was on the earth, he was saying to people and he was saying to the crowd and especially to the disciples, the Bible clearly says, then he looked unto the disciples. Then he spoke unto the disciples. Then he called the disciple and he said through the disciple to the multitude, if anybody has ears, let them hear what the Spirit of God is speaking unto them. 
So also whenever you sit down here, whenever you sit down here, and whenever you hear the message of God, and whenever you hear some scripture, whenever you read some scripture, whenever you have some scripture, when you receive some scripture, you must believe that it is God who is speaking to us, and He wants me to hear His voice, and I shall be in His presence to hear His words, understand His words, and give importance to His word. There is something that He is telling me, and I must have it. If you believe that, say Amen. Amen. Coming back to the Word of God, Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 15 is the first scriptures that we are going to read. The Bible clearly says there was a man who was a rich man. He was a rich man and he was owning the vineyard and so many other things. And so also he was in charge of many servants. And he had, a liar. He had given allotted important jobs to every servant of God. But this time, now he's going to far country. And he'll come after a long time. So he decided something to give it to the servants of God. So that they shall have it. And they shall be blessed. They shall also multiply. They shall also bring fruit for themselves. And also to the vineyard that he is trusting and giving them the talents. That's why this parable is called by Jesus Christ our Lord, the talents. Matthew chapter 25 verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven... Is as a man traveling into a far country. Remember, Jesus is talking. Jesus is giving this parable. And Jesus himself is speaking right from the beginning. And what is he saying? For the kingdom of heaven. For the kingdom of heaven. He is talking about the kingdom who is standing on the earth, who was sent from the kingdom to the earth to give the important message to the people of God, to tell them there is a kingdom after this earthly life. Very, very important. I should not miss. You should also not miss. In these days and the days to come, last time also I read it, and I remember in my message, once I told also according to Second Timothy, that latter days, the days later, will be very bad. Wars, rumors of wars, no mercy in humanity, and all will be hating one another. The own will hate one another. They will deceive one another. They'll be happy to deceive and make themselves, you know, rich and prosper. They will never care humanity. Death will not be cared. Many people will die, but they will not care. Human will not care the deaths. If you want to know such things where it is happening, go to the crowded cities. It's happening now. Later days also it's happening in every city, every town, every village, every home it will be happening. Mercilessly people will be dying and there will not be mercy from their own home. So things are going to happen. And only God, the Bible clearly says, only God's warning those who have heard and trying to live according to the word of God will be successful, will be protected. So also Daniel went into the lion's den, right? Yes. And who had uh, declared the decree? King Darius. He said, this man must be put into the lion's den. Let the hungry lions be hungry more. Two to three days, don't give them food. And when he was put into the lion's den, they must tear him up. But when he went down, went down, he saw the angel is already present there, shutting the mouths of the lion. They could not, you know, roar at him, neither jump at him, neither do anything. They were just quiet. Hungry lions were quiet when Daniel entered or laid down into the lion's den. I remember that. Similar way God was showing to me. And my brothers, my sister, this God does when you are fearful and afraid of the world afraid of so many things, he comes and tells you, do not fear, I am with you always. God is with you through angels. God is with you good, through good men and good women, those who pray for one another. God is with you through the angelic singers and worshippers. You know, many times we think that only a few people have come to the service and they are worshipping, they are singing. No, behind you there are thousands of angels singing with you. Thousands of angels, thousands of angels. Coming back to the scriptures, this is the man who wants to travel abroad or want to go far country. And when he goes, he wants to give his talents to the servants. And he has selected the best three servants. And he calls them, verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents. Unto to one he gave five talents. To another two. Another two. And to another one. And another one. The Bible clearly says, when he was going, he gave the talents. Now you might be thinking, you know, many times she can sing, I cannot sing. He can play, I cannot play. 
he can run well i cannot run they are doing such a good job i cannot they have studied very well but no they are rich is already there but we don't have this type of you know human things are always there but one should be able to understand all this blessing does not come from human comes from god alone amen what are your position today what are your situation today what are your spouse your 100 you know 100% it's all from you know god the father your husband your wife your sons your daughters your children all the daughters all the sons everything is from god and the bible clearly says you must be able to understand this is what the gift of god given unto you you should be able to understand the gift of god is given what are you going to go do about this uh, you know gifts that god has given where are you taking these gifts what are you doing them here is the example which jesus himself is speaking jesus said the two servants were given all manner of talents one one of them was given five another one was given two and the one servant simply had one talent and the two servants they multiplied them from five they made it 10 from two they made it four from one he hid it he he hid that talent in the underground and the bible speaks about verse 16 17 and 18 then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents okay and likewise he that had received two he also gained other two but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his lord's money i i i read that you know in different uh, uh, bibles generally i carry only king james version and if at all i want to read i will read new king james version and if i want to refer i will go to the net and refer through the niv that is uh, uh, new international version esv english simple translation version then esv american standard version then i will also read through amplified bible just to read the translation the bible clearly says the two servants those who had their talents they had doubled it another bible says they had multiplied it another says that they knew the value of that and they wanted to double the value the bible clearly says in amplified version one servant who received the talent he simply hid it it means he had no value for that one talent <clears throat> he did not understand the value of that one talent he simply hid it simply means just like that he hid it without anything and that's why the bible clearly says in verse 19 when the servant of god when the servant of this the owner of the servant comes back look at the verses the bible speaks about after a long time the lord of those servants remember that scripture jesus is talking after a long time after a long time who is coming back the lord the lord of the servant that servants returns the lord who is speaking the scripture the lord, lord who is speaking the scripture jesus lord christ jesus. our lord who is this king of kings and the lord of lords jesus christ he is speaking about the scripture saying the lord of the servants is coming back or returning back and returning with them and yes. making you know you know inquiring with them this reconning is nothing else but connecting himself again and seeing what they have done it because he had connected himself before going through the talents and now he is coming back and getting connected again to know what they have done it what the bible says verse 20 and 21 20 oh, go ahead 20 and, and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents saying lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold i have gained beside them five talents more yeah then next go ahead please his lord said unto him well done thou good and faithful servant thou has been faithful over a few things i will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of thy lord he also that had received two talents came and said lord thou deliverest unto me two talents behold i have gained two other talents beside them His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And then, yes. Then he went. Then he which had received the one talent. We we'll stop here. That is verse twenty-nine or thirty. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Just wait here. The Bible clearly says verses nineteen to twenty-three. Very importantly, when the Lord returns. and when he comes 
He's trying to find out with connecting to them because he came after a long time. The first two one, those who had five and two talents, they had multiplied. When he saw the multiplying talents in them, remember now, when he came and saw, this is talking about the return of Jesus Christ our Lord. You who has heard the word of God must multiply the word of God in your hearts. He who has riches received the righteousness of God, multiply the righteousness of God in his mind, body and spirit. He who had received the good health of God, strength of God, wait for the Lord, but don't waste your energy and time. The Bible clearly says, all the gifts of God is given unto mankind through God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, he has all the rights to ask you, because when he goes, he is going to come back. Remember, he has reconnected you through his shedding of the blood and dying on the cross of Calvary, taking all the stripes upon his body for my sins and your sins, dying on the cross of Calvary, early death. He has reconnected you to the Lord God Almighty. He has reconciled you. And therefore, this reconciliation has to be proved by the activity or by the blessing that God has given unto you. You have to show how you have kept your salvation. You have to show how you have multiplied the salvation blessings in your life. Salvation is the gift of God. What exactly man is living in the body? Empty. But now he knows the Savior, Jesus Christ, and receives that Savior and says, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Salvation has come into his life. After receiving this salvation, what he has done is very, very important. Bible clearly says, if you do not bear fruits, God does not want you to be empty without the fruits. You are connected to the main tree, and the main tree is nobody else but Jesus Christ our Lord. When you are connected to the main tree, you are supposed to be what? Branches. And the branches are supposed to bear fruits. If the branches does not bear the fruits, what is going to happen? And Jesus Christ our Lord gives the worldly example. Even if the normal tree does not bear any type of fruits, if the any branch of the tree does not bear any type of leaves or fruits, they cut them out. They bring it down. They burn it. See the example that Jesus is giving. They don't simply cut it and use the nice planks to build the houses. No, they bring it down, they cut it down, they bring it down and they burn it. He's connecting that dry fruit or the dry branch to the hellfire. God does not want you to be without bearing fruits. Fruits of righteousness, fruits of holiness, fruits of victory, fruits of success, fruits of honor, of talent that you have. And that is given unto you by, by God the Father through faith. Because as soon as you're born, you have received the faith gift from God. You have to multiply and walk in that faith. The Bible clearly says that when the servant came after a long time, and after he came, what did he see? He saw the first two servants multiplied their talents. And when he saw their talents were multiplied, the Bible clearly says, their Lord was pleased. The owner of the servant was pleased. But the Bible does not say that. Even Jesus Christ the Lord did not say, being a Lord of the heaven and earth, he said, that Lord was pleased. And what did he say? He praised them for their work because they multiplied their talent. And after that, he said, well done, the great reward. Then number two, and also he commanded them to be good and faithful servants. Another reward. He also said to them, you will be faithful over a few things. And I will make you ruler over many things. My brothers, my sister, when Jesus Christ of Lord is going to come for the second time, he is going to visit them, those who are alive. And before the Lord Jesus could come, if we die from this earth, when we receive our reward there, his reward will be given according to the fruit that you bore here. Not because you are in salvation only, no. The fruit that you have, the talent that you have, the work that you have done for the Lord, the, you know, the responsibility that you have done, sometimes finances, sometimes donations, sometimes your body, sometimes working in the church, sometimes you have talent to sing, sometimes you have talent to play. The other day I met one of the you know, worshippers and I questioned him. He said, no, I love now, here and there, I get some money and I get something like that. So I'm happy about doing all around. And in that I'm very busy. And the church, well, church is normal singing. What is there in the church? He did not understand the value to worship the living God. And maintaining your body, but at the same time, he gives life. He does not keep you alive on the earth. You and I cannot be alive on the earth. He does not put his breath into my nostrils and your nostrils. You cannot breathe at all. 
Remember, God created Adam from the dust of the ground and breath into his nostrils, the breath of... Never forget, breath of life is running in you. God's breath of life is running in you. Breath of life is not mine. I breathe like that. I do this way. I do that exercise. I maintain myself. Many people say like that. I maintain myself. I walk three hours. I do this type of exercise. I must sweat and therefore I do. Only exercise will help me. This is what is our mentality, human mentality, earthly mentality, dusty mentality. This does not give you any type of boost to your body. Unless and until you realize this life is not mine, he has given me. The breath is not mine. This breath is giving me life and I must recognize who has given. The Bible clearly says, then God will tell you what he will tell you. Well done. Well understood. You are a good and faithful child. He will not say servant to you. He will say child. Or he will say good and faithful servant. He will say good and faithful friend. The Bible clearly says Jesus called every one of them friend. Though they were crucifying him. But nobody calls his enemy friend. But he says they are our friends. He called every one of them friend. So also he tells you to remember when he comes. He wants to see you doing well. He wants to see you good and faithful. So also he wants to talk to you. Saying that you are my best friend. Or you are my friend who is faithful over small things and I'll make you faithful in giving you great reward of great things. Why God is going to make you? Every man who was faithful to God doing the work of God today, they may not be able to understand what they are doing with. And the Bible clearly says, He will make you ruler over many things. That is the reward given by God to them, those who are faithful unto God. Not only that, the final destination is mentioned here. The other important thing, he invites them to share in his happiness. The Lord, the earthly Lord is inviting them to share the happiness and saying, enter into the, come on, read that word, 24, 23. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. <clears throat> now has been faithful over a few things. I will make you the ruler of many, many things. things. Even after death, our soul, when it goes to heaven, we are given a task by God the Father. There will be different type of people worshipping there. There will be different type of people preaching the word of God. And I also want to say to you, in the beginning of my ministry, we have lost some you know, natural abortion uh, into our family life, my wife. And after that, one day I was sad and I was praying about this. We needed a children, Lord. And how come this is happening? And when this was happening, God showed that we are preaching the gospel there. And some of them are giving the gospel, looking like an angel, big, mighty angel. And all these abortions that is happened, natural abortion, the abortion that is purposely done by folks, and of purposely those who have murdered their sons and daughters, children, before their birth. Denomination, this is not a denomination where you are sitting and saying, I belong to this denomination. No way. Why it is mentioned full gospel? Because from Genesis to Revelation, we are supposed to read, understand, and maintain that. And know everything that God is speaking, nothing of our mind. Full gospel, only gospel. And the word of the Lord clearly says, therefore, all this, and during that time, God comforted us. How he comforted us? He saw and he showed what are the abortions taken out, natural abortions that happened to us, that our children were not born, but natural abortions were taking place. And some of the people, those who have done abortions purposely, some of them, those who have already done it at the age, little, elderly time, all those children are given by the mighty angel of God, the word of God in heaven. The word of God is given unto them in heaven. How come? They were not born. They did not have the breath. They did not have a life. But how come? But you will remember when you go to the heaven. Because every man is able to remember, every woman is able to remember when they go to heaven and when they go to hell also. That's why Abraham, when he was in the kingdom of heaven and when he was holding Lazarus the poor beggar, the rich man cried from the hell. He said, let Lazarus dip his finger and quench my thirst. And Abraham talked from heaven saying that nobody can go from heaven to hell. My brothers, my sister, there is a memory. There is a talking. In heaven, you are able to remember every one of them. You shall also be able to know what is happening in heaven. Abraham was in the kingdom of heaven. There was a big gap between heaven and hell. But 
poor Lazarus, the beggar Lazarus was seated at his bosom. It means Abraham was holding him at his bosom because this poor Lazarus suffered on the earth, beggar, all manner of you know sores on his body. Dogs used to come and lick. He was fallen down at the rich man's gate. No food, no clothing, naked he was. My brothers, my sister, similar way, God is going to show the children that you are naturally lost. The abortion that has happened naturally. Not only that, those who have murdered, not knowingly, unknowingly, saying that this law is good and we can do the abortion. I want to tell you, all those children are there and the angel of the Lord is teaching them. How they are teaching them, I will explain to you. One day God will show you in the visions, if you are you know, able to see the vision on the earth. The Bible is open in their hands. They are holding the Bible, they are preaching the Bible. And when you see them, they will be all surprised that these are so little, little children. And they are not moving around, they are just waiting and hearing the word. It means every drop of blood of our body has life. Every drop of blood of ours has life. Remember when Cain murdered his own brother Abel, what did God say? God said, Cain, where is thy brother? Where is your brother? And Cain said to God, I am not my brother's keeper. I don't know where he is. He said, your brother's blood is crying in the wilderness. Crying, my brother has murdered me. My own brother has done this wrong. And that blood was a lie. And the Bible clearly says, therefore, there is a law, even naturally, even medically, that if you see any blood around anywhere, what you have to do? Cover that blood with the sand. Cover that blood with the mud. Or wash that blood with the water. Remember this. this is, these principles are not come like that. All these principles are mentioned in the Bible. And my brothers, my sisters, the Bible, if you read that correctly, the word of the Lord clearly says, every drop of human blood has life. There is life in the blood. And therefore, these abortions, the, the angel of the Lord was speaking to them and guiding them. They are learning the word of God. Give importance to the word because you are going to live according to the word on the earth. When you die, your judgment is going to take the place of your soul by the word. And so also the word of God is going to be continuously preached in heaven, nothing else. Two things are going to continue in heaven. Praise and worship and the word of God. You, whether you'll be preaching the word, you'll be hearing the word, or you'll be hearing from many sons of God, and God has chosen to give you the word of God. You'll be sitting and hearing the word. You'll be praising and worshiping all the time. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and God the Holy Spirit. The important thing the Bible clearly says, He tells them, we are very happy, and I'm happy to tell you, enter into the joy of your Lord. Enter into the joy. It means the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is saying to them that this is the reward given unto you. You enter into the joyful presence of the Lord. And the Bible clearly says, then Jesus explains about the man who had one talent. Now you have to remember what talents you have. Whatever talents, your body may be, body structure may be different. Your style of living may be different. You must have heard about your, your education. Maybe you are higher education than others. What you have done with your education? You got a suitable husband, suitable wife. What have you done about that? What you have done about the blessing that God has given unto you, sons and daughters? I want to guarantee every one of you, when you understand these blessings are from God, you must try to multiply those blessings. Not only that, you must be happy. If some, some of the blessings you cannot multiply. Children blessing, it is not your strength, not your merit, not your wisdom and knowledge. Only God gives the children because God said when he created Adam and when God created Eve, he says, be fruitful and multiply. only he can be through making you fruitful and multiply. But when your word, when you have the word of God, you are multiplying yourself. When you have the word of God, you are blessed. When you have the word of God, you are empowered. When you value the word of God, your life is totally getting changed. When you value the word of God, your life's blessing is coming from nowhere. It is coming. Why? With man, it is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. The next word the Bible clearly says, the single talent who has received. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, weeping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent 
in the earth, lo, there thou hast that is dying. Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. What exactly happened? The man who had one talent, he never understood the plan of the Lord, plan of his owner, plan of his vineyard owner, that he is a merchandise or he is a businessman. He always multiplies his money. This man did not understand. We are also with the Lord, but we are not able to understand his mind. Those who have received one talent, they are like that. They are not able to understand the scriptures. They don't want to understand the scriptures. They say it is spoken by the Lord, but I cannot understand. It was spoken before when Jesus was on the earth. He did the miracle then, now no miracles. I met many of the servants of God personally. I met different type of, you know, you know, scholars. Also studied the Bible. We also know the Bible. What do you think? We are unmarried and we are doing the ministry of the same Lord Jesus. And therefore we want to know the things of God. I've answered to the people, those who are very highly qualified and very highly. They say, this is my degree, this is my degree, this is my degree, and this is my fourth degree, and still I am studying. And I told them, I only have one degree. And I have studied little only. And there is no such type of degree that I could explain to you more. But whatever the knowledge that I have received by reading of the word, I can explain to you. I sat down and explained. They did not believe. They did not accept. Because they only believe that that's the only thing that they are supposed to have it. Not more than that. My brothers, my sister, you also don't believe sometimes. No, 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 I will not read more word. I will not accept this law. I will not have this type of commandments. I will never believe in all the scriptures. This is spoken by Jesus Christ 2000 years ago or 2022 years ago. Now it will not work. Many times your mind must be saying that. Oh, Jesus was the son of God. He was able to do the miracle. I cannot do that. I cannot read his scriptures. I cannot see the miracle happening. Last time also, last Friday, I took the scriptures, talking to every one of you. Remember what exactly God wants and how Paul explained. Though Paul was doing a great miracles, great signs and wonders, and he still, he was saying, I'm an earthly vessel. But I have something to tell you. I'm not come to boast myself. I'm not come with my wisdom. I'm not come with my knowledge. I'm not come with my education. But I've come here to demonstrate the power of God. First Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 1 and 2, or 1 to 5, when you read, you'll be able to understand. Paul was saying that, but Paul was already working miracles. He was throwing the handkerchief. If any sick man is to come, just throw the handkerchief and go away. Their ministry was in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a godly city where Jesus was born. Jesus was brought up. Jesus was roaming around all the places and healed many blind and many paralytic people and raised them from the dead. Death were raised in the same city. Paul is working, Peter is working. Peter was walking in Jerusalem streets and his shadow is to heal the people, all those who are brought into Jerusalem street. Imagine, imagine, imagine. Paul was saying to the same, come on, read the scripture just for a knowledge and just for understanding. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, mm. declaring unto you the testimony of God. Yeah. For I determined not to know anything among you, yes. save Christ, Jesus Christ, yeah. and Him crucified. Yes. And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, mm. but in demonstration of the Spirit in and of power. In the demonstration of the Spirit. Spirit. And of power. And power. He was demonstrating, he was speaking in tongues, he was demonstrating the power. The demon used to scream and come out of their bodies, they used to get healed. Blinds were opening their eyes, lame used to jump and walk. And he was doing all this, he was demonstrating them. See how the power of God is. I'm not come with my wisdom, I'm not come with my knowledge, I'm not come with my ability. I've come with the Spirit of God to demonstrate the power of God. Though the miracle, science and working was happening, he did not say, I have great wisdom, I have great knowledge, I have great gift. Never boasted. But one thing is important, when you come back to Matthew chapter 28, 25, verse 28, the Bible clearly says, this one servant who received the talent, he hid it. 
And what did he say? He also said like that, Lord, see, he know who he is. He knew who he is. Jesus also talked about saying that the Lord, the servant, when he went for a long journey, he returned back, he does not say, he said the Lord returned back. Jesus is talking, saying the Lord returned back. Similar way, this single man, the man who had a single talent, who has hidden the talent, he also knows about it, but does not do what he has told him to. We know the Lord, but we don't want to do what the Lord is saying. I know the Lord, but I will not obey the Lord. I know the Lord, but Bible is too far for me. I know the Lord, but still I will continue with my own wisdom and knowledge. There are people. I know Jesus very well. What you are teaching me, the Bible, people talk to me. And when I told them to open a specific, you know, chapter, they never knew where is the chapter. But still they were saying, I have forgotten, I have forgotten. But I read the entire Bible. I know the entire Bible. I know all the knowledge about the Bible. And similar way, this man was telling, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. You are a working man. You are a hard working man. You always want something to come out of your money. You are the one who reaping what you have sown. He knows the entire situation of this Lord, but he has not brought into practice. He has not brought into fruitfulness in his life. And the Bible clearly says, then he says, I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the uh, ground. And after that, the Bible clearly says, and he speaks and he says, come on. His Lord answered and said unto him, <clears throat> Thou wickedest, thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not. Before you read, they receive the answer. What the Bible says, the Lord? The Lord answered and answered said. Answered, responded to his talent that he had in his hand. And when he said that I had hid it in the ground. My brothers, my sister, if you are that man and woman, if you are that child of God and that woman of God, if you are that daughter of God and that son of God, today God is telling you, God has given you the salvation. God has given you the spirit of God. God has given you the gift of God, the faith by birth. God has given you other talents also. Don't keep it quiet. Don't say, this is enough for me. Only one talent I need. I will only have gifts of, you know, speaking in tongues. I will only have gift of, you know, casting out demons. I will only have gift of healing. No, 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 it's enough for me. I come on the stage and pray and go down and sit down. No, no, no. You must increase your talent. And God will reward you. And listen, he says, the Lord says to him, the Lord's response is, he calls him a wicked and lazy. So, Come on, read it, brother. Thou wicked and slothful servant. Slothful means lazy. You are wicked and you are lazy servant. That's why God does not choose a man and woman who is not busy in the ministry. I have good experiences here. In this compound, 85 Ministries are going on 85. Now it has become to 89. 89 ministries are running. Of course, each congregation has divided from another. And there are many, many, many congregations. And totally, there are 89, you know, message, 89 services are going on in this compound. 89 services, 89 pastors, and 89 heads, and 89 super knowledge people, and 89 biblical knowledge people. But at the same time, just imagine, just imagine, if they are in the Lord, they only can prolong. If they are doing correctly in the Lord, they will only have. And God is rewarding them. And God is knowing them. He calls him wicked and lazy. And many of those who are lazy, those who thought that only one service is enough, two services are enough, three services, why so many services? Why you have to have every time fasting and prayer? We are becoming weak in our body. Our children are not able to fast. We are not able to do sometimes. You need not to fast. You need not to pray. You need not to do this. You need not to do that. Many people talk about it. My brothers, my sisters, strength comes from? The Lord. When you give your strength to God, who is going to give you strength? The Lord. Is when you give your body to God, who is going to strengthen your body? When you give your hunger to God, what is going to give you? When you give all your beauty and your handsomeness and your strength, when you give it to God, what is He going to give it to you back? Remember the first and the foremost commandment. God has said in the New Testament through Jesus Christ our Lord. Love the Lord with all your heart. With your strength. Love the Lord with all your strength. With all your mind. mind with all your spirit. Mind. With all your soul. soul. All has to be given unto God. Because He is a giver of life. He is giver of breath. He is giver of heart. 
he is giver of soul he is giver of this body he is giver of this strength so that's what you have to do and therefore he calls this man wicked and lazy servant then he tells him what does he tell him the lord answered and said unto him thou wicked and slothful servant yes thou news that i reap where i sowed not and gather where i have not strawed yeah thou orders therefore to put my money into the exchange at least you should have put my money into the bank automatic interest legal interest would have come that also you did not do and then the bible clearly says he takes away what he had given unto him come on and did then, it and close down and then at my coming i should have received my own with usury at my coming this is my closing subject at my coming lord jesus is talking there about the other lord but he is mentioning about himself at my coming the bible clearly says at my coming i should have received i should have received my own with usury whatever i have given unto you it should have been used in a proper manner and i should have received you my brothers my sister life is given unto you by god the breath is given unto you by god strength is given unto you by god today your health and healing is given unto you by god you must always say what shall i do for my lord don't simply wait saying that when i will get retired then i am going to work no close and he was ready to die he said god let your will be done father let your will be done what do you want he said you have to die he said yes i will die jesus gave his body on the cross of calvary thousands of people they watched him why they took him to golgotha so that entire jerusalem today as somebody i can see somebody is hanging on the cross of calvary from down they look unto the mountain they saw the blood which was oozing the rain came and the blood came entire washing the, all the cities that was sinful and against of jesus christ our lord understand the blessings that god has given unto you that is your talent understand what you are supposed to do it for the lord that is your talent understand how you have to live for the lord that is the talent understand nobody is going to question you neither your father neither your mother but he is going to question you and that is 100% true sure even to me and even to you be ready to answer you will say why you have come at the age of this you are not able to stand and you are trying to preach the gospel now what are you going to say to him what you did when i gave you the lots of money when you were young and i gave you lots of beauty and to sing talenting singing what did you do with your singing god will ask so many questions prepare yourself be blessed do not waste your talent your talent is in you utilize for god glorify god so that you shall not be called wicked you shall be called faithful and the bible clearly says you shall call well done my faithful servants you shall be called faithful over small things and few things and god will make you and give you reward of greater things not only that he will also tell you enter into my rest with joy peace and happiness that is the kingdom of god may god bless everyone